All right, and we're back. Um, like I said in my, le well, you're gonna see this video first. If you're watching this video first, um, you'll understand why once you watch the video for the Diamondbacks, because uh, there's some information in there that I'm trying to keep um, in my pocket right now. Um, so you will see that um, in just a little bit when I post that video. But in this video, we're gonna take a look at the Colorado Rockies. Um, who's an intriguing team because you don't really think of them so much for their pitching just because they play in Coors Field the, the you know the thin air the ball travels far plus it's the one of the biggest and most expensive outfielder um, outfields in Major League Baseball so what happens a lot is is that outfielders have to play so deep to guard against the deep line drives because the ball travels so much further that because it's such a big outfield, a lot of hits fall in in front of the outfielders. So a lot of hits that would normally be like bloop outs in a lot of other stadiums are base hits. So um, it inflates the numbers a little bit, not just home run numbers are inflated, but all numbers are inflated across the board. But having said that, the uh, Rockies actually have a couple of really good pitchers on their staff. Um, we'll dive right in and start talking about them a little bit. Uh, the first one is uh, John Gray, who is a really good young righty. Um, he pitched 172 innings last year. He struck out 183 guys and only walked 52. So that's really good. It's like a three and a half um, walk to strike uh, strikeout to walk ratio, and it's a good amount over the strikeout per inning that I like to see. And he only had a whip of 1.35 last year, which for Colorado is good um your normal whip you want to see your pitchers at around a 1.1 1.2 again because a lot of those hits fall in the numbers are going to be a little bit inflated with colorado pitchers so if you see a 1.3 1.35 whip for a colorado pitcher i know that that doesn't really help you in fantasy because fantasy doesn't adjust for the ballpark but when you look at peripherals and when you look at stuff that judge whether a pitcher is quality or not, that's going to show that he's still a quality pitcher, which means when he's on the road, his numbers then will be more in line with the rest of the league. So if you see the Colorado pitchers are pitching on the road and it's these guys who normally have a 1.3, maybe 1.4 whip, you can expect that those numbers might be a little bit better outside of Coors Field. So that's why a lot of the Colorado pitchers sometimes are a better play on the road than they are at home. So uh, keep that in mind when you're setting your lineups for, you know, for your fantasy leagues this year. Um, then you go to German Marquez, and this kid is, this kid's really good. I really like him. I think he's going to develop into the ace of the staff. Um, last year he threw 196 innings and he struck out 230 guys. And that's ridiculous. Um, that's a lot of strikeouts. So if you can get your hands on a guy like that, you absolutely want to. And he only walked 57 guys. So that's a 4 to 1 um, strikeout to walk ratio, which is really good. And his whip, now if you look at what I just said about the whips being inflated because of the Coors Field factor, his whip last year was a 1.20. So... You're looking that if he pitched anywhere other than Coors Field, he'd probably have a whip of around 1.0 something. So that's in that Zach Greinke, Jacob DeGrom, Justin Verlander. That's in that kind of range. So, I mean, this kid has got some stuff. So he's definitely a guy you want. If he's available in any kind of league, you go out and you get him. Because um, he he's pushing some elite numbers. Um, and he could really, if he takes any kind of a step up from that, he could be one of the best pitchers in baseball this year. So definitely, definitely a guy that I'm looking at that I'm trying to acquire in a couple of different trades right now. Then you have Kyle Freeland, who's an interesting play because he's got a couple of numbers that are really good. But then when you look at his strikeout and his walk numbers, you're like, how? Um, he threw 202 innings last year. And only struck out 73 um, hitters. And that's like well under a strikeout per inning. So right there is a red flag to me. Then when you look at the fact that he walked 70 batters. So he struck out 173 and walked 70. That's 
like two and a half on the uh, K to K to walk ratio, then you look, and his WHIP is only one point two five, and he went seventeen and seven last year for his record. And I'm like, how? So what that means is he probably pitches a contact. I didn't really get to see him a lot last year. So, but if I'm just looking at the numbers, if I'm just crunching the numbers and trying to figure it out, he probably pitches. He's probably a ground ball pitcher who just pitches to contact and just lets the guys put the ball in play a little bit. So, I mean, that has value because he's going to help you with wins. To me, that means he probably had a, a, quite a few quality starts and his whip is low. So, I mean, if he could ever get those strikeouts up just a little bit and decrease the walks, he'd be elite. He'd be probably right up there with Marquez and at least with John Gray, who's a good pitcher. So, He's a guy, he's not going to be drafted as high as the others, just simply because some of the peripherals don't line up. But he's a guy that if you can get him in the mid to late rounds of a draft, can give you a lot of good value. So I definitely would be looking for him if um, if he was available. In the bullpen, uh, Wade Davis is really the only name that jumps out off the page at me. Um, he was one of the best closers in baseball. He's taken a little bit of a step back, but he's still really solid. So he's a guy that if you can get him, I would definitely try and get a hold of him for the closer position, uh, just because he's going to give you some. He's going to give you numbers. Uh, moving on to the hitters, there's really only um, five hitters that really come off as um, huge. They have some holes. Uh, first base is going to be um, a prospect this year, probably Ryan McMahon. That is, if Daniel Murphy uh, doesn't play first base, if he plays second then um, McMahon's probably going to be the first baseman. Um, if Murphy plays first, then I don't know who's going to play second. Um, so it really just depends. Um, catcher um, is a big question mark. They have Tom Murphy, who's a very good prospect, but hasn't really hit at the major league level. So you really don't know what you're going to get out of him still. But the hitters they do have are pretty elite. I mean, starting with Nolan Arenado. I mean, what's what else more is there to say of this guy? He's probably, other than Jose Ramirez from Cleveland, probably the top uh, third base option in baseball. Um, so he just signed the mega, mega extension. I think it was like eight years, $260 million or something around those lines. Um, so he's the man. Um, he's really good. If you have him bonus for you if you don't have him you're gonna have to spend a lot to get him so um guys like him don't come around very often uh trevor story who's the shortstop another elite option you can pencil him in right now for 25 to 30 home runs he's gonna hit 280 to 300 um he's gonna knock in 90 to 110 rbis so again another plug and play guy daniel murphy if he is healthy um, he was injured quite a bit last year in his last year of his contract with the Nationals. If he is healthy, I am looking for an absolute monster year from Daniel Murphy. I think he could be an MVP candidate. That's how big I think his numbers can be if he's 100% healthy. I think he could hit 330 to 340 in that ballpark. I think he could hit 30 to 35 home runs. Um, I really think his numbers could be huge. If I knew he was going to sign with Colorado in the offseason, I actually traded him on a team last year that I had because of the injury issues, and I sold low on him, and I regret that decision because right now, thinking of what he can do in Colorado is absolutely scary. So it really depends on his health, though. If he's healthy, he's going to have a monster year. If he's not healthy... He'll put up numbers when he plays. Um, it just depends on how much he's going to play. So, and then in the outfield, you have Charlie Blackman, who on a down year last year still hit 26 or 28 home runs, hit 290, and had an on-base percentage of like 350. And that was a down year compared to the past couple of years that he had. 2016 and 2017, he had monsters. He had over 30 home runs. He hit like 320, 330, and was on base like 380, 390. So um, he's still a great option. Uh, David Dahl um, is a prospect who came up about a year, year and a half ago. Came up in the middle of 2016, I think. Uh, played quite a bit last year. He's shown flashes of greatness. He hasn't really shown the consistency yet. 
So he's the guy to look for. <sighs> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. I had a head cold and you can hear it. I'm all stuffy. Uh, so I didn't sleep very good last night. Um, he's a guy that if you can get value on, um, I would definitely look for that value. Uh, because in that ballpark, all of a sudden, if it clicks, it's going to click hard and his numbers are going to jump pretty big. Uh, that's pretty much it for their lineup. They're kind of a middle-of-the-road team as far as, like, you know, regular MLB standings and record and stuff like that. I don't see them as a playoff team. Um, but I don't see them as a the type of team that will sell off their pieces either. Um, I think, if anything, they may try and add. They may hope for maybe a couple of these prospects that I'm about to talk about to take the next step and maybe even get a call up with the big league team this year. So let's dive right in. There's only four prospects really that I'm excited about. Uh, one of them is Brendan Rodgers. He's the number nine prospect in all of baseball. And he's kind of a weird case because they've played him in so many different positions that he's the number nine prospect in all of baseball, but he's not in the top 10 listings for any individual position. Um, but what the kid does is hit and he hits for extra bases. He had 17 home runs last year. He had a 330 on base percentage. But he had 114 hits total, and 46 of them were for extra base hits. That's ridiculous. If you've watched any of my videos, you know what I look for is a 3 to 1 ratio from hits to extra base hits. And this is close to 50 50. You know, he's at least approaching 40%. So that's really, really good. You really want to take a look if. If he's available, you have to grab him now. He should be not available in any league that has prospects. If he is, there's something wrong. So, um, the next one is Colton Welker. He's the number 94 overall prospect. He's a third base. Um, he's a third base guy. Um, last year, another guy with big extra base hit numbers he had 151 hits last year total and 45 of them were for extra base hits so that's about you know that's right around that third that i like to see so it's good but where he jumps off the pages he's just a hitter he batted 333 and he had a 383 on base percentage so that's something that's really good that means he has some plate discipline he's got patience at the plate um so that's something you definitely want to look for then you have Peter Lambert. Um, he's a right-handed pitcher. Um, he's the number 99 prospect in baseball. Uh, the peripherals don't look all that great. He pitched 148 innings last year, and he only struck out 106 guys, but he only walked 27. So that, to me, shows that he's got a lot of control, and he could wind up being like a kid like Freeland where – you know, he just doesn't strike out a lot of guys, but his ERA and his whip are always playable, and he has a good record and gets quality starts. So to me, that checks a lot of boxes. So um, really just depends on his development. You know, he might be a fastball curveball guy exclusively, and if he can develop a slider or a changer that becomes a good out pitch, then you can see the strikeout numbers jump. So he's definitely an intriguing guy to keep an eye on. And then you have Garrett Hampson. He's not in the top 100, but he's the number six second base prospect. And again, it's for his bat. Um, he had 138 hits last year. 41 of them were for extra bases. He hit 311 and had a 382 on base percentage. So if you're looking for offense, obviously Colorado is a great place to start anyway, just because of the ballpark, but they have a lot of guys on their roster, a lot of guys in the minors who are going to be able to produce for you hopefully soon. So you definitely want to take a look at their roster. You definitely want to take a look at the guys they have and um, look for that for the help that you might need. So, you know, look for trades, look for free agent, look for look for a guy who, you know, if you have a guy who has Daniel Murphy and he had a bad year last year and you can, like, get him to sell low on him, I absolutely would. So... That's going to do it for the Rockies. Um, tomorrow I'm going to come back and try and uh, handle the other two California teams. I'm going to do um, the Dodgers and the Padres. And that will wrap up the National League. Um, and then we will move on to the American League. So I'm hoping to get that done um, 
completely next week. So that way we can move on to some uh, um, other topics. Uh, maybe I could do a live draft or two before um, before the season starts so I can show you like strategies and stuff like that. Uh, so as always, like, share, subscribe, do all that kind of good stuff for me. If you have any questions, send it in. Um, if comment underneath, let me know what you want. Let me know what you're looking for. And I can make that happen for you guys. All right. So that'll wrap it up for this one. And I will see you guys later.